This is an NBC News special report. Here's Savannah Guthrie. Good morning, everybody. We're coming on a bit early with breaking news. A horrifying scene in Baltimore this morning. The Francis Scott Key Bridge struck by a cargo ship and collapsing overnight. You can see the video right there. Shows the entire structure appearing to break apart. This is a mile and a half bridge over Baltimore Harbor. NBC's Tom Costello is right there at the scene for us. And Tom, obviously the concern is anyone who was on the bridge, members on the cargo ship. What can you tell us? What's the latest right now? That's right. This happened at 1.30 this morning. A Singapore-flagged vessel, a cargo ship, struck one of the support structures, one of the pylons, if you will, holding up the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And with that, the entire bridge, as you saw in that video, collapsed into the water. Just a, a stunning scene here. And this is a critical artery, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, into uh, and around the port of Baltimore, which, as you know, is one of the nation's busiest ports. And so that is going to create a a massive logistical headache this morning. The Maryland governor has declared a state of emergency. The transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, in, char in, in contact, I should say, with the Maryland governor as well. Fire department and Coast Guard rescue operations have been ongoing since very early, searching for any potential victims who may have gone into the water. And we have heard there may be seven people who went into the water, maybe more. Nobody on the ship is missing, we believe. However, the concern is that there may have been construction workers on top of the bridge when the bridge was struck and that they may have gone into the water. As a result, this is a massive search and rescue operation, and it's being described by some at the Maryland State Police as an ongoing mass casualty incident. This is right along the critical I-95 corridor, which, of course, is, is the critical artery up and down the East Coast. So if you were planning to drive up and down the East Coast through Baltimore, be aware that you will see traffic affected. The traffic is being told to avoid 695 and go up I-95 and 895 instead. Nonetheless, uh, as you would expect, we have major, major emergency operations now staging at our location. Uh, we are just down the road from this bridge that stretches over the Patasco River, River pardon me, and it is unlikely, of course, given the state of that bridge, there's going to be any activity, of course, for some time. Tom, right now, it is all about life-saving rescue operations underway. Yes, yeah, so this is the, the, the ship is called the Dolly. As you said, it's Singapore flagged. As I understand it, it had just departed Baltimore Harbor, uh, presumably loaded with cargo. When you look at the, the video yeah. closely, it appears as the cargo ship, it looks very dark as it hits that support structure. Uh, you know, one can't speculate, but it looks very, very dark as it hits yeah. the support structure. What do you make of that? Well, not only that, but notice right above it, that appears to be smoke uh, coming from the ship itself. Uh, all of this is according to eyewitnesses who have also said they thought they saw smoke coming from the ship. So that clearly is going to be part of this investigation. And I must say, all of us who live in the greater Washington, Baltimore area and who are very much aware of what a critical bridge the Francis Scott Key Bridge is, are, are stunned that how a single cargo ship could take this bridge out, how could they have hit the pylon to begin with? And second of all, um, how is it possible that this bridge was so vulnerable yes. to being taken out by a single cargo vessel? Agreed. Regardless, I mean, yeah, as you know, imagine. this is. Yeah, yeah and, it, and this is a critical port. The Port of Baltimore handles just a tremendous amount of volume, shipping volume for the East Coast. And this morning, all of that is very much uh, kind of hitting the pause button as this ongoing search and rescue operation continues. It's still dark uh, there, and we're looking at some overhead images there, Tom. I don't know if you can see. We seem to have some new images coming in, aerial images. Uh, so we have to wait for the sun to come up to see just how extensive this is. This is a mile and a half long bridge, as you mentioned. It's known as it's the key bridge in the Baltimore Harbor, but part of 695, I-695, a heavily trafficked area, yeah. as you know. Can you tell whether, I mean, you see sort of a portion of the bridge appearing to still standing leading up to, I mean, is it fair to say, do you have any insight in, from your vantage point, is the entire bridge collapsed or is this a partial bridge collapse? 
Uh, you know, Savannah, I'm going to, here's the thing. You have as good, if not better view than I do, because I'm about a mile down the road, and yeah. we can't, of course, go over that road because it goes right into the bridge. Right. But these aerial shots that we're looking at really provide us the best perspective. And to me, this looks like, for all intent and purposes, a total bridge collapse there. Maybe just a tiny piece of it is still standing, but uh, this is just an unbelievable uh, series of events that has brought, have brought this, this bridge down here in Baltimore. Well, there's, uh, as you said, up to 20 people potentially still missing. The shipping company says that all of its cargo ship employees are accounted for. That is good news. There are uh, reports of construction workers who were on the bridge at the time and who may be missing in the water and talk about conditions there. You're standing, it is right there, it is very, very cold. We understand the water yeah. there of the Patapsco yeah. River to be about 48 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which of course brings up concerns of hypothermia very, very quickly. Well, and this happened at 1.30 in the morning. So if, uh, if anybody had gone into that water, you'd be very concerned about survivability at this point. It's about 35 degrees out here, out on the land, uh, and we have a bit of a wind blowing here. Some of, some family members, I'm told, some family members of construction workers have been gathered at a nearby gas station just down the road, looking for, waiting for any word at all about whether their loved ones were safe, but we don't have any word on that at this point. We are awaiting a press conference we expect momentarily from Maryland state authorities, uh, state police, we believe, and hoping for more information. And you're right, the numbers of potential victims has kind of been very, very uh, up, just all over the map. We've heard seven, we've heard up to 20. The problem is we don't know how many cars or individuals may have been on the bridge at 1.30 in the morning and gone into the water. Mm. Uh, so yes, there are an awful lot of unanswered questions here, but just a just an unbelievable series of events with that bridge crumbling. And not only that, for us to have video of the moment of impact uh, is, is really striking. As I mentioned, the NTSB will be leading the investigation, but we are still very much in the emergency rescue stage. And I wanna just mention, we showed a few moments ago a makeshift podium being set up. There it is. Uh, officials are expected to be briefing media in just a few moments and we will continue to be here live and we will carry that live as we hope to get a little more information as you said there's much more that is not known at this hour Tom than is known um, and but yeah. important to note that authorities have immediately referred to this as a mass casualty event so a tragedy and a shocking one at that and and to just go back to this bridge and the history of the bridge it's nearly 50 years old it opened in 1970 uh, the, the other ways through this particular area, which if, if you look at a map, it's a waterway, very complex waterway, one of the biggest ports in the United States. And the bridge is uh, the, the bridge was opened as an alternative to the tunnels in that area. It has had some renovations somewhat recently in the 80s. But, Tom, I'm struck, as you were and other witnesses are, that one cargo ship, Granted, it, hitting a pylon, a major support structure, could bring down a, a bridge that's a mile and a half uh, long. Yeah, that's right. And I think one of the key questions for investigators will be, who was piloting the ship? Uh, as you know, when you come into very busy ports and harbors in this country, very often the captain of the ship has to essentially hand control at, uh, of the bridge over to a local pilot who gets on the ship to navigate into the waters, to navigate into the harbor itself. So we don't know if it was the captain who was responsible for the ship at that very moment, or did they have a local harbor master, if you will, or a pilot, I should say, who was on board at the time. We simply don't know. And pardon me for not having all, the, all of the proper language on this. I am not a harbor expert, and I'm sure we've got them on our, uh, in our audience, people who are very familiar with this. But this is a very, very complicated port with a tremendous amount of shipping volume, carries just a tremendous amount of cargo into and out of the East Coast. Uh, and I will tell you that if you travel in and around the Baltimore area, you know how often you see massive container ships here, cruise ships are here. There are an awful lot of, of car lots where brand new cars are staging before they are loaded onto or coming off of these ships. Just a tremendous amount of activity in this area. So to lose the Francis Scott Key Bridge and then to also have this harbor or this port so dramatically impacted, 
will have a, a dramatic impact on the Baltimore region today, certainly economic, but also, of course, just logistically and getting around. But at the moment, our, our key concern is, is how many people may have been on the bridge and may be in the water. Yes, including potentially at, at several construction workers who may have been working at the time. Look at this aerial shot here, Tom, and it's hard to make out, frankly. It's dark. It's unclear what we're looking at there because there were conflicting reports about whether or not the cargo ship itself had sunk. Yeah, I've, I've heard that it may have sunk, uh, Savannah. I don't have that myself. I don't have that information confirmed. It's one of the reasons we're hoping to get more clarity uh, from Maryland state authorities uh, with this news conference any moment now. I think we want to know whether, in fact, that ship did sink. We want to know how many people may be still in the water, how many people may have been on the bridge, how many are they looking for, the extent of the search and rescue offers. We know the operations, rather. We know that Baltimore City Fire and Rescue has been here. Also, surrounding fire departments responded. The Coast Guard responded as well. Tom, but we're waiting for the specifics of that. And, and I, we're going to hear from officials who may get some of those answers as they step here to the microphones in, in Baltimore uh, on this breaking news this morning, the, the collapse of the Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor. Let's listen. Everybody good? Everybody ready? Okay, good morning. My name is Chief James Wallace. I'm the Chief of the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm joined this morning by our Mayor Brandon Scott, Council President Mosby, Councilwoman Porter, County Executive Johnny Oshevsky and Baltimore County Fire Chief Joanne Rund. Um, our brief this morning will be an update on the search and rescue operation that's ongoing at this point. So at approximately 0140 hours this morning, our 911 center dispatched a call to the Baltimore City Fire Department for a report of a water rescue um, in the Patapsco River in the area of the Key Bridge. As units were responding, they began to receive numerous calls indicating multiple people in the water. At some point during that, that chain of events of calls, uh, we began to receive indications that a, uh, a ship may have struck the key bridge. We got further information through multiple calls that the key bridge, um, portions of the key bridge had actually collapsed. At about 0150 hours, our first unit arrived on scene and reported um, a complete collapse of the key bridge. Um, we were also given information at that time that there were likely multiple people on the bridge at the time of the collapse and that as a result, multiple people were in the water. We were able to remove uh, two people from the water. One individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially, that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. At this time, we have multiple air assets from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore Police Department, as well as multiple marine assets from around the region, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, as well as multiple local and state police uh, agencies, uh, National Resources Police, um, BPD Special Ops Unit is in here, Maryland State Police is here. We have multiple resources. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. We believe at this point, we may be looking for, we may be looking for upwards of seven individuals. That's the latest information we have. However, what I will say is, is the information that I'm giving you right now is as of right now. That's what we know right now. Um, this is a very large incident. It involves a very large footprint. Multiple agencies are operating. Therefore, information is subject to change as we get more intel um, and as our crews work through the morning. Um, over the next 8 to 12 hours, you can expect to continue to see um, our air and maritime assets functioning um, out on the water and in the air above. Um, we need to do damage assessment of, of the ship itself before we can board that ship. Um, and we need to continue 
our subsurface search, which is including um, different types of sonar. We have side scan sonar. We have other sonar capabilities here. We have underwater um, UAVs that we're working with. And throughout the night, we've also been working with uh, infrared technology, both from the air and on the water surface. So um, I'm going to wrap up here with just saying this continues to be a search and rescue operation. It continues to be a very dynamic operation with multiple local, state, and federal resources involved. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our mayor, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. Uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing active uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're going to continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, to throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted, uh, folks who uh, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. We're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Olszewski. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Um, I think we all awoke this morning to an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we know that there will be families and individuals impacted by this, regardless of what happens the rest of the way out. Uh, so I would just echo the mayor in lifting up prayers for those who are impacted, but also ask that our residents pay pray for our first responders. Um, you know, they have been on scene since very early in the morning. Um, not only conducting initial search and rescue operations, but planning for uh, additional ones as the sun comes up. And, um, you know, the work that they do cannot be understated. And we just, I want to just thank them for all that they are doing and, and will do in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support, just as we want to thank um, our state partners for the, the resources they've offered up, uh, as well as uh, the federal partners who have already reached out. Uh, the mayor and I have talked to the governor. We've, we've heard from the secretary of transportation. Uh, so collectively, we thank everyone for uh, their thoughts, their well wishes. Uh, but again, this is a very active situation, and we want to just thank uh, the chief and our teams for all the great work they're doing. And with that, I'll turn things back over to the chief. <coughs> Thank you, County Executive Olszewski. Uh, we do some Q and A right now. Now we're just going to go around, have everyone uh, present one question. Chief, can you tell us where the crew of the ship is? Um, you also mentioned too that uh, two people were rescued. Who made the first 911 call? And there were reports that it was a crew on the deck of the ship working at that point. Can you confirm any of that? Again? The latest information we have on the sh on the crew of the ship is that they are still on board the ship. Um, there's been comms between the ship crew and the Coast Guard. So as, as part of the uh, overall operation, we communicate through the Coast Guard with the ship. And, and I'm sorry, your other questions? There were two people taken. Who made the first 911 call? I don't know who's who made that call yet. Okay, and there were, were there other workers on the, the deck of the ship at this, or the deck of the bridge at this point? We had heard that information. Can you confirm that? We were being told there were workers on the bridge. We have yet to confirm that. Um, we'll work with MDTA to, to, you know, obviously to get that information. About how many cars were on that ship? Last question. Uh, on the uh, on the deck of the bridge at the time of collapse. Do you know Don't have a number. I can tell you our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. I don't have a count of that yet. Thank you. Uh, Chief, you mentioned upwards of seven individuals that you're looking for. We heard reports of as many as 20 individuals. Mm -hmm. Just paint a more clear picture of about how many people actually fell into the water, how many people you might be uh, looking to rescue, and also if you can give an idea of how many vehicles, although you might not have the answer, but really just the search for those Yeah, I'll start with the last one. So I don't know how many vehicles yet. I know that we have detected the presence of vehicles. As far as the number between the 7 and 20, that's been a dynamic count um, throughout the morning, just given the fact that 
we haven't yet nailed that number down. We do believe that at least seven are involved in that, at least seven at this point. That fell into the water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I know you said the crew was accounted for for the Coast Guard on deck. Do we know if any of the crew members were part of these, at least seven people that may have been in the water? We do not. So we'll be guided by by our dive teams. We will determine what the temperature of the water is. The other issue that we have out there is this water is 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 current uh, influenced. So right now we think the tide is coming back in. That adds a bit of a challenge to us also. We can certainly dive in these conditions, but we have to take a lot of factors into play, right? The fact that there may be trauma involved, they have been in, in the water an extended period of time. Um, but also remember, we're battling darkness. So, you know, it's, it's quite possible that we may have somebody there that we've not seen yet. Um, and as they work closer to the debris field, um, you know, they'll, they'll obviously make those determinations. But we're going to rely on the experts, which are our, our, our dive masters that are here, our dive team, to tell us when they believe we've reached that 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 non-survivability point. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chief Wallace, was there any indication that there was a problem on the ship? Was it led in by tugboats at any point during the main day? Like anything that uh, so far early on told you to something? We, we do not have that information with regard to the investigation. I would refer that to, to law enforcement. My, my focus since 1.40 this morning has been that rescue operation. So, so far there's been no indication that any kind of like an emergency dispatch came from that ship this morning? I have no information about that, ma'am. Have you, have you been able to talk to the pilot, the American pilot on, on that bridge? The, the, the pilot on the vessel? Yeah. We have not talked to the pilot on the vessel. The, Rescue personnel, the rescue operation, we have not interacted. Just back over here. I don't have age and I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't I don't have age and gender on either. One patient refused service, right? It really, they weren't injured. The second patient, however, was seriously injured and is at an area trauma center. Are you including them in the seven, at least seven? We don't know yet if they're part of that seven. Okay. That the, the the patient is injured severely enough that we've not been able to debrief that patient. That seven number, that come from people witnessing cars going down. Like where did that number come from? Or is that just from the sonar hits that you got? No, that was the initial information that we got as we were arriving on the scene, that number. And that number again, as I said earlier, has fluctuated, right? <laughs> but that, that seven has been a consistent number. Oh well, wow. dozens. Um, yeah, dozens. I mean, locally, you know, fire department wise, Baltimore County's here, Howard County's here, Hartford uh, was here, PG was here, um, Anne Arundel, um, of course, Baltimore City, and a lot of those agencies are here by virtue of the fact that they may have specialized equipment that we need during an incident like this. So um, we're we're bringing in. The equipment specific to the operation right now and then even even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do so given the incident is so big we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search we don't we've not been able to confirm that we actually have an active fuel spill from the vessel um, we've had odors of diesel fuel. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here, um, as well as the Coast Guard. So they would take leads on that as well. We hope as the sun comes up a little bit with the air assets that are up to get a much better picture. If we do have a fuel spill, what the impact has been so far. Yeah, Maryland State Police has been here. Um, Foxtrot is also working this. There, there are two air resources right now. Um, I don't know that we won't bring any more in, but right now they're the two primary. Um, 
you know, air reconnaissance on something on the open water is just, it's an invaluable resource. And we've been very fortunate to have it because as we put people out in the dark on the water to conduct searches, they have that degree of overwatch from those assets. So it's it's been an invaluable resource for us. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Executive, uh, we're talking about search and rescue. I know that, and that's where the focus is right now. Uh, I was awakened with this news. We're all awakened with this news. I've seen the video. What, what, what do you make of the totality of this incident? What, what are you thinking about what you've seen and what this community has experienced? Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see physically see the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just think about, most importantly, and which is what we all should be thinking about right now, nothing but those families and people that are impacted and those people who are risking their lives right now from not just Baltimore City and Baltimore County, but all over this state to try to save lives. That should be our focus, the preservation of life because no one wants to see that happen, let alone someone in their family, someone that they know uh, uh, be injured in an incident like this. Mayor Brandon Scott, other officials, James Wallace, the fire chief of Baltimore City, with the breaking news this morning, it is on your screen, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor, in the water this morning, the Patasco River. And we've learned quite a bit from that news conference. I want to bring in Tom Costello, our correspondent who's at the scene. Most importantly, that at least seven people are still unaccounted for this morning. And right now, yeah. marine units looking for survivors in the frigid waters there in the Patapsco River. The cruise ship is in your vision right there. It is still afloat, and we're told by officials there that the crew remains on board that ship. But you can see what happened at 1.30 this morning, and I believe we have the video of it as well if you're just joining us now, 6.40 on the East Coast. A cargo ship leaving Baltimore Harbor, the Dali, owned by Synergy Marine Group and carrying Maersk cargo, hits a support structure of the Key Bridge in Baltimore. And there are reports this morning, according to officials, that the entire bridge has collapsed. As the sun is coming up on the East Coast, we are starting to get a better view, an aerial view. There were cars on the bridge at the time. The officials say that sonar has detected the presence of cars in the river. Two people were pulled from the river this morning. One was uninjured. The other is said to have very serious injuries. And this is a search and rescue mission right now. Tom Costello is with me at, at the Patapsco River, about 48 degree water temperature. To say that time is of the essence, this happened at 1.30, 1.40 this morning, about five hours ago. Rescuers have their work cut out for them as they search for survivors here. Absolutely. I'll just tell you, standing on the ground here near the bridge, it is very cold out here. We're about 35 degrees with the wind blowing. Uh, it's about 45 degrees or so in the water. We checked with the University of Minnesota Duluth on how long somebody might be able to survive if they were in the water. And uh, within seven minutes, somebody might face just extreme exhaustion. And then potentially, even if they have protective clothing and a float uh, gear of some sort, Best case scenario, usually you have an hour. And so we're very concerned right now about the seven people who are missing and whether uh, at this point in being in the water with that kind of exposure uh, might prove life threatening. Uh, a couple of other headlines out of that. This has been a massive response from Baltimore and all of the surrounding counties sending their own fire rescue and marine personnel. We've got helicopters in the air above us. You heard the fire chief talking about using those air assets to search the water. That's very much what we have been hearing right, uh, right overhead, I should say, as they search for any signs of survivors in the water. And the other headline is, you know, we didn't go know, Savannah, going into this conversation, you and I didn't know how many people were missing. We had heard as many as 20. We now know seven. And separately, we didn't know if the ship had sunk because it's so dark we couldn't see. Now we know, in fact, the ship is there. Uh, the crew members survived. Nobody injured on the on the deck of the ship itself. And we're told that the uh, rescue teams don't want to board that ship until they've done a full damage assessment and they know whether it's safe. So there's an awful lot that goes into this right now. Absolutely. These uh, very frigid waters of the of the Patapsco River outside Baltimore right now, the focus of an intense hunt for any survivors.
of this extraordinary event, this cargo ship hitting a support structure of the Key Bridge in Baltimore and appearing to take it down perhaps entirely. We will continue to watch this story. You'll have full coverage on NBC News Now, on NBCNews.com, and of course, coming up in just a few moments on today. For now, we return you to your local programming. I'm Savannah Guthrie in New York. This has been an NBC News special report.